Hello everyone, uh, this is the uh, Game Biter, and I know it's been uh, quite a while, uh, been out for the holidays, but today I'm here playing a little game made by uh, Steve Walmsley called uh, Aurora 4X, a um, little game he's been working on in his spare time for like I think over a decade now and it is a very deep and complicated um, 4x space uh, colonization strategy game kinda reminds me kinda makes me think of a mix of a um, Space Empires games and uh, Stars, if you've ever heard of that game, but kind of the uh, the best elements of those two games series put together with a whole bunch more uh, depth and whatnot thrown on top. Yeah, it's very engrossing. Um, I'm kind of starting here on the desktop on my desktop since. Uh, when you start up the game, you just presented with this tiny little screen. Uh, the game doesn't really have much of a graphic style. It's mostly menus and text with a <clears throat> very simplified map that's able to show a lot of information on it. But, uh,. So when you first start, um, you just click new, you cr create a new game, and I'm just going to call this the uh, <coughs> Let's Play Universe, and I'll be starting, first of all, I'll be playing with a, uh, I'm not playing with uh, humans, be playing with the uh, Utah Raptors, and I'll be um, basically just role playing this game as um, a uh, like a distant continuation of uh, one of my favorite uh, fan f fan fiction series um, called the uh, the Seven Hunters, written by uh, Rhombus. Um, it's, it's a uh, Land Before F Time uh, fan fiction, but the uh, I guess the main points of it that would apply here is there's an object that crashes on the Earth that kind of resembles like the monolith from uh, 2001: A Space Odyssey, and it. Um, it changes the uh, the gang, like the kids from the uh, Land Before Time series, into uh, carnivores, into uh, hunters, and they, you know, they have to go. They have to learn how to live a new lifestyle and become what they fear the most and stuff. But it's kind of point. It's kind of um, lightly hinted at that they've been giving given this advanced knowledge that will allow them to evolve like much later in the, into the uh, future so that that's what I'm doing here having a race of Uteraptors that evolved from them over thousands of years eventually um, united uniting so I'll just be the United Biters. Um, I guess we're a union if we're united. And, I mean, we're still from Earth. I'll just go with the player race. Um, I think I wanted uh, Ancient Greek... Greece is the main empire theme. 
and then I guess just English names. And probably be <laughs> the bet the best way to go without having like crazy names for commanders and stuff. Um, but yes, this um, group of Uteraptors have evolved. And they're to a point where they're just ready to uh, go out into the stars. However, they're still a conventional empire. They haven't researched uh, trans-Newtonian tech yet. And I'll kind of have to explain that later <laughs> when I uh, research it. But I'll be a conventional empire. So that means you kind of start with less basically no tech and you start with no much less infrastructure and whatnot and you kinda have to build up more but it's I don't know I kinda like building up from a smaller point in uh, simulation games like this and also it kinda makes sense for the roleplay so let's see keeping all these the same we're going to have missile bases since I anticipate that these dinosaurs have developed nukes so they can nuke any uh, dinosaur killing asteroids that come their way. Um, no tech. We're starting, we're going to start in the solar system with We'll have intergalactic uh, invaders. And... We'll start with no other empires to begin with. But, uh... <clears throat> well, basically how, how, uh, how I've done these settings. Uh, when the game starts will only start with the one one solar system that uh, my empire's in. I'll, the game will only be calculating stuff for this one solar this one solar system, one empire. And when I finally expand enough to explore other systems, it it will uh, create new solar systems as you uh, get to them as you explore and then it it just creates empires as you explore as you discover a system that they would be in and then the game like the the game can start getting hard once i start start to expand so i, I think i'll play that way i hope, I hope that made sense Th that'll work too since this game is kind of um I guess you can say it's not optimized well, so when you kind of get into the late game, turn times can just start to get unbearably long. So I'm not sure how long I'll be able to play this, but uh, I mean I'll probably keep playing this until I either get wiped out or the uh, turn times just get too unbearable. I don't want simplifications. I don't need any of this junk. I'll do a uh, oval to motion for asteroids. That'll work better. Oh, also, <coughs> I'm starting at year one since um, the kind of uh, gear counting that we do uh, humans doesn't make sense for these uh, Uteraptors since they've they they probably want to have a counting uh, year system like we would at our that would be anywhere near 2000 probably not so I'll just start counting at one that that doesn't really change anything in the game it's just what year you start counting at and I think I think we're good um, yeah, so you click create game, very quickly it, uh, finishes race, uh, 
creation since it's only making your empire right now. Um, it, it'll create the other races as you discover them. So click OK. And it'll kind of sit here for about maybe 10 to 20 seconds as it uh, generates the uh, my first starting solar system. Hmm, hope it doesn't take too long. Come on. Yep. So game setup's complete and we press select to get started. So we push select and we're um, presented with the the main menu of this game. Now you can all you can go to game and game info to come back to this screen. And this is where you can uh, you can save your game whenever you want. And then uh, you could select. Let me get out of this. So yeah, you can go there to uh, save it, save the game. Uh, Space Master. I haven't really dealt with this, but this is basically the uh, like the God Mode, just everything editor. Like you could just edit um, any object in a solar system and increase your resources or tech or whatever. Basically, if you wanted to cheat in stuff or set things up a certain way f for a role play or something. Um, screen The screen you'll spend the most time is you go to Empires and System Maps. You can also press F3. And this is the main screen that this game takes place on. Uh, it looks like a big mess. Um, if we zoom in, actually, and let me uh, let me turn off the asteroids from the display menu, you'll start to see some familiar things. We've got Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Uranus. I'm sorry, <laughs> Jupiter, Mars. Earth, Venus, Mercury, the Sun. So yeah, this is our solar system, basically. I'll turn back on the asteroids. You see, there's a asteroid belt in between Mars and Jupiter that has a good 100 or 200 asteroids in it. And uh, as we like... Uh, go out and explore and survey these different bodies. Uh, some of them will have uh, resources on them that we can uh, strip mine out and uh, send back to Earth to uh, build more things with. And then at the outside of the solar s system is the uh, Kuiper Belt. So there's more asteroids out here. And there's also various comets on their very elliptical orbits. Um, you know, they, they come in very close to the sun, whip around, and go back out, and um, some can take years or decades even to uh, make a full trip. Now, let me go to the first button on here. And just by the way, these first five buttons can open... They open the same win this same window, but uh, just different tabs in this window. And you can see there's like lots of information for our uh, Earth colony. So this is populated systems. This shows all of the colonies we have. But uh, so we can find them quicker, though it's only showing Earth right now. Uh, I guess if I could explain a couple things here: uh, planet planetary uh, suitability or colony cost is basically uh, how much infrastructure 
your uh, population requires. And on Earth, it's zero since uh, the environment's basically perfect for um, humans or uteraptors. <laughs> so you want this you want this number to be as low as possible, as close to zero as you can get it. And if you look at um, I don't know if there's a way to look at these right now. But if we if we looked at Mars, let me go to body info. Does it say a colony cost? No, but the uh, colony cost for Mars right now, I think it'll be two. So for every um, ten thousand colonists, you'll need a uh, two infrastructure. Yeah, I don't see it here. Oh, whatever. But yeah, I'll get I'll get in more to that when we uh, start colonizing other colonizing other planets and get into terraforming and all that. Your population, we're starting out with a uh, half a billion raptors. Your populations uh, split up into different sectors. Um, your agriculture agriculture and environmental is basically the percentage of your population that's just focused on surviving so uh, this is one thing this percentage would be a lot higher on a, if you try to colonize a planet with a high colony cost you'll have a higher percentage of your population just trying to survive and less will be less will be available for these other two sectors. Uh, the service industry is basically economic, uh, wealth building, uh, building goods that's used for trade that's creates more wealth for your empire. Manufacturing is basically what you use directly as the emperor, the person running uh, your empire. And they they fur they further break down into uh, like shipyard main workers, maintenance, construction, scientists, uh, my miners, stuff like that. So these are the um, people that you'll use directly for your empire to build structures, build infrastructure, build ships, research, all those things, mine minerals. So you, of course you want to get as many people as you can in that so you can uh, do it faster, get more done, support more stuff. Um, anything else I really need to explain? Um, just starting out, we've got a thousand conventional industry, and we'll have to. This industry is really not that. Um, it's not that good, and we'll have to research uh, our first technology in order to uh, convert it into something more specialized that can get ten times as much work done. Um, anything else I need to worry about right now? We got no fuel right now, but um, it's going to be a few years in the game before we build a ship, so that that's fine. I think the first thing I need to get into is uh, research. Um, and since we're, we're starting as a conventional uh, empire, first research we need is uh, trans-Newtonian technology. And so it's a construction production uh, tech. So you'll do better if you put 
someone who is in construction produ production. So we have Lucas Middleton has a 10% bonus, so he'll research this 10% faster. But um, he's specialized, so that bonus is multiplied by four. So he, he'll be 40% faster researching this technology. So he'll even be he'll even be faster than Robert Murphy who has a 30% bonus just because his bonus is multiplied by 4. So um, one, one thing you're going to want to do in this game is to try to get good scientists in every field that have a high bonus in every field so you can get uh, more research done more quickly and as you as you use a scientist they have a chance of uh, increasing their ability increasing their bonus so I just start I just started the uh, the research I'm using all five of the research labs that I have right now and it's going to take about three and a half years to research this technology so we're not going to be doing anything for a while. Um, see, the industry tab would be where you would construct like facilities on Earth, build shipyards and all that stuff. But uh, we don't really need anything right now. Like anything that we we don't have anything useful that we can build right now so there's no use in uh, I'll just leave this standing as it is if we go to mining and maintenance we've got well, actually we have yeah I guess it counts as a thousand mines we have a thousand conventional industry which uh, Conventional industry, they do everything, but they do everything with a ten, uh, only a tenth of the efficiency of this these uh, new buildings that I'm researching. So we have a thousand conventional industry, but they're only working like there was a, a hundred mines. So I'm getting a thousand of each resource if they were one accessibility so that thousand production is further reduced if your accessibility is lower which I guess this is basically just I guess how easy or how hard that uh, resource is to um, extract or to get to to refine or whatever so like Corund Corundium is fully accessible so we're getting a thousand of it a year but uh, Iridium is only half as accessible so we're only getting half of it and the two biggest uh, resources we should worry about early on is Sorium which is the it is basically the resource that you refined into fuel for your ships so you're going to want to get a good source of that early on and then duranium is the main resource that you use to build things early on like build all of your buildings and infrastructure and you use some in uh, ships too and all that so we're going to need a lot of duranium and a lot of uh, a good source of sorium starting out. Um, what else? God, this game's so complicated. What else do I need to do? Oh yeah, academies. I need to go to uh, Teams Academies tab and open the officers window here. And I need to select a uh, go to sub 
civilian administrators. I need a governor for the earth. So basically a middleman under me who will just run like the day-to-day -day activities on uh, one of my colonies. Um, I'm going to need someone with a good... Get, does someone have like a good research bonus right now? That's really what I need. Uh, mining would be good. Terraforming, not useful since... Terraforming wouldn't be useful for Earth because it's already uh, perfectly uh, suitable for my species. Oh, but um, population growth would be nice. Um, logistics. Um, I think I'll go with uh, Bailey Howe. Since she seems to have fac factory production bonus and population growth, which would uh, both be good early on. So yeah, I'm going to go assign her as the governor of Earth. And then one more position I need to assign right now is that under naval officers, I need to go to... Yes, yeah, staff officers, and then, yeah, this is kind of weird. You go to staff officers, and you have to click on a relevant level of, a, like, rank of an officer. So we need at least a rank three. Oh, we only have two choices. Let me see. Ooh, survey bonus would be nice. But... That factory bonus would be right, good right now. Um, I'll need that early on. So I'll assi you assign... You assign someone to uh, the fleet commander. And it opens up a lot of other positions you can fill. But, uh... Basically, w once you set the administrator and the fleet commander on a planet or a colony, uh, you can just go to... You can automate ass assignments and just automatically fill in all the other positions with uh, the best candidate for it. So, uh, that you won't have to deal with all that other stuff. <laughs> that would make it way too complicated. And then... Okay, the last thing I'll need to do on my on this first turn is uh, go to my shipyards. I only have one shipyard right now, uh, Carol and Kirby. And it has one slip away, so that means it can work on one ship at a time basically has one bay and it can build up to a thousand tons of ship which that is that's like nothing I'm, so I'm going to need to go to uh, I think I'll go to continual capacity expansion so this uh, the shipyard will just keep expanding itself until I tell it to stop. I'll need to keep uh, expanding it till it gets close to probably 3,500 or 4,000 would be the size of uh, the first ship, the first uh, design of ship that I'll want to build. So I'll, um, I'll just set that activity. And I'll just have to keep checking on this and uh, stop expanding it when it gets about big enough as I need it.
Um, let me see. Okay. I think I've done everything. Everything I need to do for the first turn. Um, th th this episode's getting a little long now, so I'll just end it here. Uh, when we come back, I'm going to actually. We'll actually go to the next turn. I'll explain kind of how the turn times work. What's all this mess about? These buttons that range from 5 seconds all the way up to 30 days. What does all this mess mean? Um, yeah. So, um, and we'll, we'll be uh, researching that first uh, technology. Expanding our shipyards. And that's basically all that we're uh, able to do starting out. Yeah, I'll see you guys later. Uh, bye.